In the same way that schools provide free toilet paper and soap to students, efforts are underway around the country to make menstrual hygiene products available to people who have periods for free as well. Senator Steve Swadzinski, a former teacher, has proposed a bill to do just that. He's also proposing bills to ensure high school graduates receive instruction in personal finance and civics. He joins me now to talk about these legislative efforts. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. I must confess that I was a little bit amused, but also very appreciative of your willingness to take on the topic of period poverty. You presented this in the Education Committee last week. Menstruation is not a topic very many men are willing to discuss, and yet it is a topic that half of the population must deal with. So how did this bill come to you? Oh, man. Um, and thank you for acknowledging that. Uh, so about three years ago, pre-COVID, um, th three women from the U, young women, and three students from um, a school district in my district, a school in my district, met with me and just wanted to talk about this issue. And everybody at this meeting, because there were other members there too, um, were all women except for myself. And it was awkward and uncomfortable. And yet I listened and I'm kind of like just perplexed that, as you said, you know, we provide toilet paper, we provide paper towels, we provide soap products, and yet we don't provide feminine hygiene products. And so it planted a seed in my head. And so I ended up talking to the school nurses in my district and they had all wonderful anecdotes of why this is necessary. I talked to teachers that said we, I keep a few in my desk drawer. I, I mean, I just had no idea how needed this bill was and the uncomfortableness of being a seventh grade girl or sixth grade girl and for the first time and having to, anyways, um, that's how the whole thing started and it just has steamrolled since then. And, and you, you sort of previewed my next question a little bit because uh, women who've been through this, you know, it, it's a great equalizer. You'll ask a stranger anywhere, in a bathroom, whatever, when you're in need. But if you are a young girl and this is new to you, it can be so embarrassing. So since this bill came to you, I know you mentioned you talked to your wife and your daughter and so many other women now have come forward with stories of their embarrassing moments. This has been a bit of a wake up, or I shouldn't say wake up call, aha moment maybe. A wake up call and aha moment for me big time, especially hearing my wife's anecdotes from when she was a young girl that I, we've known each other for 40 years and I never knew this. And I'm sure every man out there, I don't know how anybody can be opposed to this bill um, because it just, it just talk to your wives, talk to your daughters, talk to your moms and you're gonna go, okay mom, I guess I, I'll vote for this bill. And uh, it's, so it's, it's just, and like, so I, went, I was at Eden Prairie High School a couple of weeks ago and I was just happened to t talk to the school nurse again because I've kept her in the loop over the last couple of years and she's like just get this done just get this done it's necessary and she told me how Eden Prairie does it and and I was walking th through the hallways back to my old department and I happened to see a secretary that I adore I haven't seen her in a couple of years and I just went in and said what I'm working on and she goes last week I had to give a student uh, my sweater to cover up um, mm -hmm. uh, um, some bleeding through her clothes and, um, and and that happens all the time stories anecdotes like that and that just happened to a secretary at the high school. Now I mentioned the phrase period poverty because that is what um, journalists and others are calling this this movement because it's also an equity issue there are people who cannot afford these products. They're not cheap and miss educational opportunities. Stay home from school. Uh, their lives are impacted because they can't afford the means to kind of, you know, keep keep things neat and tidy throughout the day. So this is also an equity issue, correct? Yes, big time. And because, I mean, 50% of the population has this monthly um, a bed. and uh, happening happening wow. <laughs> back to our earlier conversation of um 60s um, music and um like anyways so um uh, yeah, it, and then so to find out, and it's a bigger piece of the puzzle than even just equity, um, than normalcy for 50%. Normalcy is not the right word, but just equity, and just to find out, like you said, girls missing school because they can't afford um, period products. And then I found out that SNAP programs doesn't, you can't use your SNAP fund money for, for period products. And that's just crazy that we're penalizing young girls for being young girls and 
then double penalizing them if they happen to be, um, you know, uh, not being able to afford these products. And it's, it's just the right thing to do for, for everybody. Now let's turn to your wheelhouse, and, and I'll, I'll get you off the hot seat here. Uh, because you have also presented legislation that would ensure civics for 11th and 12th graders as a graduation requirement, and also a course in personal finance as a high school graduation requirement. Let's talk about civics, your wheelhouse. Why 11th and 12th grade? Why do they need this? Yeah, thanks, Shannon. Um, first of all, it's not required to graduate in any school. A government standalone class, civics, whatever you want to call it, it's not required to graduate in Minnesota. Um, the standards, you can embed in wherever you can fit them, but a standalone government class is not required. Um, three of my school districts, I represent three school districts, only one requires it to graduate. And, um, and it's Eden Prairie, and it's because back in 2001, after being the government teacher for 15 years, I'm like, kids are graduating without this class. It was an elective. And I fought for it, um, and we got it passed in locally in, within Eden Prairie. And, um, and so, but, and some school districts required in ninth grade, in Eden Prairie it's 11th or 12th grade, you have to have it then. And the reason I want it then is because that's when kids are signing up for selective service. That's when they're paying their first gas taxes. That's when they look at their payroll check for the first time and go, oh my God, I have to, what are these T-A-X-E-S, if I just spelled it right, that on my, on my pay stub. And, and they're starting to, you know, go out on dates and realize that they're, it, what, you know, all these taxes. And the, the 17th um, grievance in the declaration in the, of independence says um, the reason we're fighting a war against the king is for taxation taxation without representation. And so 16 and 17 year olds are being taxed without rep being represented. And um, so I, A, I think it's wrong on that level. And B, it's, they just need this class and they're screaming for it. And ninth grade is just too young. I don't think because they haven't had those experiences yet with their paycheck and signing up for selective service and all these things a, a fledging adult has to do. So uh, I, I, I get pretty passionate about that class being required required to graduate. And right now the language we um, passed, I think three years ago, um, we got the language in the, in, the, in the statute now, it says encouraged in 11th and 12th grade. But so, you would like it to be mandatory yeah, across the state. Yeah, and the opposition, and it's fair, um, some of my opponents say it's, um, it's an unfunded mandate upon the schools. And if a school district wants to do it, like Eden Prairie did, um, they, they have the right to do it. But to, for the state to be mandating um, you know, what classes you should teach, and to me that falls on false ears, at least to me. Well, you also have a bill that would um, require a course in personal finance. and. I think that both government and personal finances are much more complicated issues now than when I came of age. But how did the how did this idea come to you, and and what's the rationale, um, kind of succinctly, if you can, for having kids have a course in personal finance to graduate? Yeah, well, like the period poverty bill, I mean, this is Civics 101. I mean, I didn't think of these things myself. I wished I had, but the bill came to me through, you know, just meeting your elected officials. And so I was, um, I met this woman that was complaining to me that her kid is saddled with college debt and all these things. And I don't know why he didn't have to have a personal finance class when they were in high school. And I'm listening to this um, woman and I'm like, oh my God, because when we were kids, you saw your parents fighting over the kitchen table once or twice a month and bills piled up and checks being written and kids don't see that anymore because everything's done online. So now more than ever, um, the kids need to have a personal finance class. Again, 11th or 12th grade because if we require a class like that in 9th grade, the kids aren't going to take it. Maybe some will, but not all because they just don't have that experience yet of, oh my God, I, I have to start setting aside money for college and, and um, you know, all these kids of god they're like 24 25 and they're graduating with all this debt and it i i think it may made a, may have made better decisions had they known um in high school um about things like being saddled with college debt the rest of for the next 20 years of your life and so anyways yes well we'll follow these bills as they hopefully move through the system and senator steve swadzinski i want to thank you for your time thank you shannon for having me and i greatly appreciate this honor mm -hmm.